Pharmaceutical Microbiology Interview Questions and Answers Part 1 Techniques in Microbiology 1. What is the purpose of the Gram Staining Technique? Gram staining helps classify bacteria as gram-positive or gram-negative based on their cell wall structure. This distinction guides treatment choices, since these groups respond differently to antibiotics. Gram-positive bacteria stain purple, while gram-negative bacteria appear pink. It's a fundamental tool in microbiology for identifying bacterial types. 2. How does the pore plate method work? In the pore plate method, a diluted microbial sample is mixed with molten agar and poured into a petri dish. Microorganisms grow into colonies within the agar, making it easy to count viable cells. This technique helps measure bacterial or fungal load in samples. It is commonly used in pharmaceutical quality testing. 3. What is the principle behind the gel clot LEL test? The gel clot limulus amoebocyte lysate LEL test detects bacterial endotoxins. It uses the blood of horseshoe crabs, which clots in the presence of endotoxins. A positive result indicates contamination in pharmaceutical products. This test ensures product safety in injectable drugs. 4. What are selective and differential media? Selective media allow the growth of certain microbes while inhibiting others, like Maconchi agar for gram-negative bacteria. Differential media distinguish microbes based on biochemical properties, such as mannitol salt agar turning yellow for Staphylococcus aureus. These media help isolate and identify specific microorganisms. They're essential in pharmaceutical testing. 5. How does the streak plate technique isolate microorganisms? The streak plate method spreads a microbial sample across an agar plate in a specific pattern. This thins out the bacteria, leading to isolated colonies. Each colony originates from a single microbe, making it pure for further analysis. It's widely used in identifying contaminants in pharmaceutical production. Part 2 Sterility Testing and Aseptic Techniques 6. What is sterility testing? Sterility testing ensures that pharmaceutical products are free from viable microorganisms. It is done using direct inoculation or membrane filtration methods. This test is mandatory for injectable drugs and medical devices. The results confirm compliance with regulatory standards. 7. How does membrane filtration ensure sterility? In membrane filtration, the sample passes through a filter with pores small enough to trap microbes. The filter is then incubated in growth media to detect contamination. This method is ideal for testing large volume or viscous solutions. It ensures even low levels of contamination are detected. 8. What are aseptic techniques? Aseptic techniques prevent microbial contamination during manufacturing or testing. They involve sterilizing tools, using laminar airflow hoods, and practicing good hygiene. These methods are critical in producing sterile pharmaceuticals. Failure to follow them can lead to contaminated products and safety risks. 9. What is the importance of sterility assurance levels SAL? Sterility assurance levels quantify the probability of a single viable microorganism in a sterilized product. For pharmaceutical products, SEL is typically set at 1-0, meaning a one-in-a-million chance of contamination. This standard ensures patient safety. It is a key parameter in regulatory compliance. 10. Why is a laminar airflow cabinet essential in aseptic processes? Laminar airflow cabinets provide a sterile environment by directing filtered air over the work area. This prevents contaminants from settling on equipment or materials. They're vital in sterility testing and aseptic manufacturing. Proper use reduces contamination risk significantly. Part 3 Antimicrobial Resistance and Susceptibility Testing 11. What is Antimicrobial Susceptibility Testing, AST? AST determines the effectiveness of antibiotics against specific bacteria. Techniques like the disc diffusion test measure zones of inhibition around antibiotic discs. Results guide treatment decisions for infections. In the pharmaceutical industry, it helps monitor resistance trends. 12. How do bacteria develop antibiotic resistance? Bacteria develop resistance through mutations or acquiring resistance genes from other microbes. Mechanisms include modifying drug targets, producing enzymes that destroy antibiotics, or using efflux pumps to expel the drug. 
Misuse of antibiotics accelerates resistance. This is a major challenge in healthcare and pharma. 13. What is the minimum inhibitory concentration, Mike? Mike is the lowest antibiotic concentration that inhibits bacterial growth. It helps determine the right dose of antibiotics for effective treatment. Mike values are critical in susceptibility testing. They also help track emerging resistance patterns in pathogens. 14. What is the difference between bactericidal and bacteriostatic antibiotics? Bactericidal antibiotics kill bacteria outright, while bacteriostatic antibiotics stop their growth. The choice depends on the infection type and severity. Bactericidal drugs are preferred for life-threatening infections. Understanding this helps develop better treatment strategies. 15. What is the e-test in antimicrobial testing? The e-test uses a strip with a gradient of antibiotic concentrations to determine mic. The strip is placed on an inoculated agar plate, and the mic is red where bacterial growth stops. It's simple, accurate, and widely used in pharmaceutical microbiology. The e-test provides detailed susceptibility profiles. Part 4. Microbial Contamination and Control in Clean Rooms 16. What are clean rooms and why are they important in pharmaceuticals? Clean rooms are controlled environments designed to minimize microbial and particle contamination. They are essential for manufacturing sterile products. Strict protocols like gowning and air filtration are followed. Clean rooms ensure compliance with regulatory standards. 17. What is the role of HEPA filters in clean rooms? HEPA filters trap particles and microbes, ensuring clean air in controlled environments. They can remove particles as small as 0.3 microns with 99.97% efficiency. HEPA filters maintain the sterility of clean rooms. Regular maintenance ensures their effectiveness. 18. How is microbial monitoring done in clean rooms? Microbial monitoring involves testing air, surfaces, and personnel for contamination. Methods include settle plates, contact plates, and active air samplers. Regular monitoring ensures the environment meets cleanliness standards. It also identifies contamination sources for corrective action. 19. What are common sources of microbial contamination in clean rooms? Sources include personnel, raw materials, equipment, and airflow systems. Poor hygiene, improper gowning, and unclean tools are major contributors. Controlling these factors reduces contamination risks. Awareness and training are crucial for maintaining sterility. 20. What is the significance of clean room classifications? Clean rooms are classified based on permissible particle and microbial levels, such as ISO 5 or ISO 7. Higher classifications like ISO 5 are used for critical areas. These classifications ensure consistent quality in pharmaceutical manufacturing. Adherence prevents contamination-related recall. 21. What is the importance of regular cleaning and disinfection in clean rooms? Regular cleaning and disinfection remove contaminants and prevent microbial growth in clean rooms. Disinfectants are chosen based on their effectiveness against a wide range of microbes. Cleaning schedules are strictly followed to maintain sterility. Proper cleaning ensures compliance with pharmaceutical regulations. 22. How are disinfectants validated for use in clean rooms? Disinfectants are validated through testing to ensure they effectively kill specific microorganisms. Tests include surface efficacy, contact time, and microbial challenge studies. Validation ensures the disinfectant works under real clean room conditions. This is critical for maintaining microbial control. 23. What is the role of personnel in clean room contamination? Personnel are the biggest contamination source in clean rooms, shedding skin cells, hair, and microbes. Proper gowning, hygiene, and training minimize contamination risks. Movement inside clean rooms is also controlled to reduce particle generation. Awareness of clean room protocols is vital for maintaining sterility. 24. What is microbial recovery and why is it done in clean rooms? Microbial recovery involves monitoring air, surfaces, and equipment for microbial contamination. Techniques like settle plates and contact plates are used to collect samples. Recovery rates indicate the cleanliness level of the clean room. This ensures compliance with regulatory standards and identifies contamination trends. 25. What are settle plates and how are they used? Settle plates are petri dishes containing growth media, 
left open in clean rooms to capture airborne microbes. They are incubated to detect contamination levels in the air. This method is simple and effective for monitoring microbial load. Regular use helps track the effectiveness of air filtration systems. 26. Why are pressure differentials important in clean rooms? Pressure differentials prevent the entry of contaminants from less clean to more critical areas. Positive pressure is maintained in sterile zones, while negative pressure is used in hazardous areas. Monitoring ensures that the airflow is controlled and unidirectional. Proper pressure differentials are essential for contamination control. 27. What is active air sampling and how is it performed? Active air sampling involves using devices like air samplers to draw air through a filter or onto a growth medium. The samples are incubated to detect and count airborne microbes. This method provides quantitative data on microbial contamination. It's crucial for cleanroom validation and routine monitoring. 28. How do gowning procedures reduce contamination? Gowning procedures ensure that personnel wear cleanroom-approved clothing to prevent shedding contaminants. This includes coveralls, masks, gloves, and booties. Proper donning and doffing techniques minimize contamination risks. Strict gowning protocols are essential in maintaining cleanroom sterility. 29. What is the significance of environmental monitoring in cleanrooms? Environmental monitoring tracks microbial and particulate levels in cleanrooms. It includes air, surface, and personnel sampling to ensure contamination control. Trends in monitoring data help identify potential risks. Continuous monitoring ensures compliance with GMP requirements. 30. What are Grade A and Grade B cleanrooms? Grade A cleanrooms are the most sterile environments used for critical operations like filling sterile products. Grade B cleanrooms surround Grade A areas and support their sterility. Each grade has specific limits for particles and microbes. Maintaining these classifications is crucial for regulatory compliance. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and explore the fascinating world of pharmaceutical microbiology with us. Your support and engagement mean the world to us, and we hope you found the content informative and valuable. Whether you're a student, professional, or someone curious about microbiology, we appreciate your dedication to learning and improving your knowledge. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated with more educational content. Your feedback and suggestions are always welcome as they help us grow and create content tailored to your needs. And remember, learning is a journey. Stay curious, keep exploring, and never stop asking questions. Once again, thank you for watching, and we can't wait to see you in the next video. Stay safe and inspired. Smiling face with smiling eyes.